and for themselves. I mean, yes. for example, science is in our everyday lives. Uh, yeah. uh, we, we talk about a more technological uh, style here, but you've got another simple toy which has to do with straws. Yes. Uh, uh, show us how that works and again tell us, I mean, for example, what, what would I, that teach us? Hmm. This is a wonderful activity for to get kids doing science. We showed them how to make this because it would take them a while to figure it out on their own. It's a big straw. I, I went into uh, a, a coffee store and swiped a couple and a regular straw and just taped one end and we show them, <laughs> boom, it goes. A good one will go 20 meters. Yeah. Right. But the first time they do it, it will only go two or three meters. So they have to observe which kids are not used to, adults aren't either, and report, oh, my rocket went to the left. Then I ask them, why did it go to the left? I don't know. Well, there's something on the rocket that forced it to go to the left. We're teaching them the basics. Observe, report, associate cause, one of effect, yeah. make one change. Mm -hmm. Nowhere in school is that done. Everybody went, is such a rush to tell them potential energy, kinetic energy, right. and give them all the terms. They never get down to the basics of observing, reporting, associating cause and effect. So I guess in a way you're asking them the questions. They yes. have to find their own answers. You That's don't right. give it to them. That's right. I keep asking <laughs> questions. Uh -huh. And rather than telling them something, I ask a question. Your brain does not work. You don't start thinking until you hear a question. If I give you an answer, mm -hmm. the brain stops working. Mm -hmm. I want the brain working, so I ask a question and I give them a challenge. Could it be because of our impatient nature of our instant society that we're looking for the answers right away and not the process right away, of getting yeah. there? Uh, I think that certainly contributes to it, the fact that you can go online and get, yeah. get everything in an instant. But if we want scientists and engineers and inventors and also artists and musicians to be creative and to really make the new products and services of the next millennium, they need to have the patience to watch what's going on around the world and mm -hmm. to take that in and then be creative with it. And if we're in such a rush to tell them everything, they're never going to be able to create things. Okay, well, point taken. So in order to teach our kids in the manner that you have just spoken of, how do we teach the enlightened, the adults, to use that method? That they <laughs> That's the biggest problem first. because the teachers and parents are in such a rush to get it to them. And, and what they have to do is stop, ask the question, it doesn't matter if you don't know the answer. It's the question that's important, not the answer. Because the question drives thinking. The answer stops the thinking. Mm -hmm. I guess the hard part is getting uh, sort of, they're afraid, I guess, that sometimes maybe the kids won't uh, clue it into what is the actual exam question. The, the, <laughs> the kids know exactly what interests them. They know what they know. They know what they're capable of learning. All we have to do is give them challenges and give them questions, and they will rise to the occasion. Mm -hmm. What is it that parents will have to bear in mind if they want to do this? I mean, besides uh, throwing a question at them, you also have to guide them along. Well, to some degree, you guide them by providing them materials, by providing them questions, and listening to them. You know, not be in such a rush to say, we're going to go here, we're going to go there. Listen to what the child has interest in, and wherever the child is interested, encourage that growth, and just keep going, and try to expose them to new things. It is the interaction with new people, new concepts, new ideas that spawns the creative thought process. Mm, listen to what the child has to say. You know, I guess kids, you're sort of like little mm -hmm. adults at the end of the day. You know, a lot of parents, uh, I won't say who, but, uh, you know, they kind of make their kids take <laughs> ballet think, yeah. and piano and right. all of that when they're not interested they in that. They have to have a personal interest. So mm. when a kid is curious about something, they learn mm. better because you're excited about the topic and you discover on your own rather mm. than just having to memorize the facts. Mm. Well, that was Dr. Dr. Ed Selby, co-founder of Kids Invent and an advocate for creativity and learning science. If you'd like to check out his program, you can do so at this website. It's www.kidsinventasia.org. All right. Um, we are going to head for another short break. Yep. Uh, but still to come, we've got plenty, so do stay with us. We'll see you in just two minutes.